Hi, my name is Paul Stubbs. I'm a product marketing manager on the artificial intelligence and research team. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an intelligent knowledge bot using Cognitive Services, Azure Bot Service, and Cortana. Cognitive Services enables your applications to see, hear, speak, and understand the world around them. They comprise of 30 Azure-based REST APIs that can be used from any platform using any language and are free to get started. The Cognitive Services are grouped into six categories, vision, speech, language, knowledge, search, and labs. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Q&A Maker API to create a knowledge base from an FAQ web page. Then I'll show you how to create an information bot using the Azure Bot service to ask the Q&A Maker knowledge base questions. The Azure Bot service enables you to develop a host intelligent conversational bots that can connect with users across multiple channels. Starting on the left, the Azure Bot service enables you to create a bot using C Sharp or Node.js and host it in Azure in either a web application or an Azure function. Your bot code can call additional services to fulfill intents of the user, such as the Q&A Maker API. Cognitive Services provides the brains for your bots. You then connect your bot to any number of channels, such as Facebook Messenger, Skype, Microsoft Teams, or you can create a custom channel to connect to your own host applications. In this demo, you'll see how to create an information bot using the Q&A Maker API, Azure Bot Service, and deploying the bot to Cortana. Okay, now for our demo, what we're going to do is we're going to take an FAQ and turn it into a knowledge base using Q&A Maker. You can reach Q&A Maker at qnamaker.ai, and when you sign in, you'll be able to create a new service. The first thing the new service asks for is the name of the service, so we'll call this Infobot. It's asking us for a URL of our knowledge base or an FAQ page or a product manual. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to use the FAQ from the Bot Framework site. So in the documentation on the Bot Framework site, there's an FAQ that has information and questions and answers about the Bot Framework. So we'll just simply copy this URL and paste it into the Q&A Maker form. We could also upload documents as well, such as PDFs, Word documents, Excel files, comma delimited files. In this case, we'll simply use the URL that we created and hit Create. Q&A Maker parses that FAQ web page and turns it into a question and answer pair table. We can also add additional questions and answers to the knowledge base as well. So we'll say hello. And then simply save and retrain the model to capture our question and answer. We can click on test on the side to take us to a, a bot-like interface that's going to allow us to test our knowledge base. So if I say hello, we can see the bot returns the question and answer that we just gave it. We can also ask other questions. When did the bot framework start? When you create a Q&A Maker knowledge base, it automatically builds the language understanding on top of your questions so that we can ask general questions to our information. In this case, it returns an answer, but it also returns other answers here on the left that could be valuable as well. And you, as the curator of this information, could choose other answers and better train the model by simply choosing the right answer or adding other ways to ask the questions and save and retrain. When you're done with the curating the knowledge base, you simply can publish it. When you publish it, what it does is it turns your knowledge base into a REST endpoint. And we can use that REST endpoint in any application, or in this case, we're going to use the Azure Bot service to use this as the brains for our bot. So let's go over to Azure to look at how we create a bot. So log into the Azure portal at portal.azure.com. Next, we'll just simply click on New, AI and Cognitive Services, and then Bot Service. The form asks us for a name of our bot, so we'll call this InfoBot2. 
We can choose their subscription if you have multiple. You can choose to create a new resource group or use an existing. You can also choose the hosting plan, whether you want to host this bot in, an, in a web app or an Azure function. And then we'll pin this to the dashboard and click create. Once our bot is deployed, the wizard will open and ask us a couple of questions to choose the template in either C Sharp or Node.js. We have five templates to choose from. We're going to choose the question and answer template. We'll click Next. Now we need to create an app ID and secret for our, our bot. So we'll click on Create Microsoft App ID and Password. This will generate an app ID and password passing in the name of our bot. We've now generated an app ID that we'll copy back into our bot. And we'll go back and generate a password. Copy the password into our password field. Click I agree and create the bot. The next step in the wizard is to actually choose the Q&A maker knowledge base that we want to use. In this case, we're already logged in, so it pulled the list of knowledge bases that we have, and we can see the InfoBot that we just created. So we'll choose that and say OK. Once our bot is provisioned, we can see on the Build tab that we can choose how we want to interact with our code. We could download the code and edit it inside of Visual Studio. We could upload the code into Visual Studio Team Services and use continuous deployment. Or we can use the online code editor to edit the code in line in your browser. So here in the browser, we can see all of the code for our bot, and in particular, the dialogues. Here we have the Q&A Maker dialog, and we can see that it's a very simple. There's really no code because it inherits from the Q&A Maker dialog. All we simply need to do is provide the subscription key for our service and the knowledge base ID for our info bot that we created. Next, we can also look at analytics. So we can see the analytics for our bot. We can look at additional settings for our bot. Here we can actually test our bot in line through the test console here. So we can say, hello. And we see the response that we had that we added in. We can also say, when did the And we see we get the answer that we saw when we were using it in Q&A Maker. The last step is to actually add it to the channels we want it to surface in. 
In this case, by default, it's using Skype and web chat. We want to use the Cortana channel. So we'll click on Cortana. Here we can change things like the icon that appears in Cortana. We can change the display name. We can also change the invocation name. So we'll change this to InfoBot. And we'll give it a description. And a long description. We can also set information about the properties, the user profile data, and security here. But in this case, we'll just click Save to continue. Now that we're connected to the Cortana channel, we can even go to the dashboard of Cortana and see that our bot has been deployed and connected to Cortana. And here we can see our InfoBot 2. Now we can view and use our Cortana bot on any place that you have Cortana, such as Windows, or on the Harman Kardon Invoke speaker, or in Android, or in this case, let's look at it how, it's, how it is in the Cortana app on iPhone. So now that we've deployed our Cortana bot, we should be able to open Cortana on the iPhone and ask it a question. Ask InfoBot, when did the bot framework start? We'll choose yes to accept. And you can see that it went out and it ran our bot and queried the Q&A maker knowledge base for information about the bot framework. And so you can see in this demo, we've gone from an FAQ, created a knowledge base with Q&A Maker, created a bot using Azure Bot Service, and then surfaced that bot in a channel at Cortana on our iPhone. I look forward to seeing the intelligent bots and applications that you can build with Microsoft Cognitive Services and the Azure Bot Service. Start building your bots today at botframework.com and sign up for Cognitive Services at azure.com slash cognitive. You can also reach out to me at askai at microsoft.com. Thank you for your time today.